Okay, thanks for the introduction. Um, okay, so um, my name is Patrice Ruka, um, and thanks to HPC IUDC conference, let me introduce um, Phobos, um, an open source object store implementing tape library support. Okay, so um, I work at CA, a uh, French research organization, and um, where um, uh, here CA Computer Science Division designs and operates a um, large HPC simulation cluster uh, that produce uh, each day very huge amounts of data. Um, the team I am part of is in charge of um, designing and operating data storage system able of uh, ingesting petabytes per day and storing for a long time uh, exabytes of data. Um, to, to address this challenge, um, existing object stores appears as a promising solution um, with their simple put, get, delete um, API. They, um, they easily deliver a good horizontal scalability. Um, they are today widely adopted for internet services, cloud computing, and, um, and social network. Um, but uh, often, um, uh, the design of um, object stores um, is often only disk-oriented, disk and they could be only deployed to um, use hard drives, SSD, flash, or, or NVMe. Um, whereas, um, to store exabytes of data, magnetic tapes, uh, drives, and magnetic library remains a good solution, um, especially for uh, safe long-term storage at uh, low cost. That's why um, we have been developing since a few years at CA Phobos. Uh, Phobos is a scalable object store able to store objects on a set of five systems on different storage media technologies, as um, hard drives or magnetic tapes, for example. Phobos is able to directly manage a type library through um, standard SCSI drivers and support uh, all common type drives model. Um, we can optimize I.O. access depending on the storage technologies. Uh, for example, if you use um, magnetic tapes, uh, Phobos aims to minimize data sync, um, which is for sure not a good thing on, uh, on tape. Okay, so we directly manage and uh, support uh, library. Mm. Our main um, guidelines first include um, scalability and fault tolerance. Um, then Phobos is uh, open source and built on top of uh, available and widely adopted standard technologies. Um, this avoids any locking uh, to private vendor technology, which we definitely prefer when we try to store data on a long-term perspective. Um, as example, uh, we use um, LTFS um, so linear tape file system to store data on magnetic tape. Um, we use uh, simple and common interfaces as the REST and uh, Object Store API. And we try to um, offer a simple administration as intuitive as possible um, through an admin-friendly uh, uh, common light interface. Um, both is light, easy to deploy, and, um, and easy to maintain. Um, quick look to the history of the project. Um, we began the project design in uh, 2013. Uh, the first version was developed in two years, from uh, 2014 to uh, 15, and put into production um, in 2016. Um, we open source it um, last year, and um, this year, in 2020, uh, we developed an S3 frontend in collaboration with um, DDN and uh, ISHEC, the Irish Center for High Hand Computing. And I will detail the next step in a few slides. Um, so let me give to you um, a global overview of the product, um, the current status of Phobos architecture. Um, so let me detail it uh, step by step. Um, 
Okay, first, um, we have an IO adapters layer dedicated to fit um, each storage technology. Currently, uh, POSIX and LTFS are the two existing optimized IO adapters. Um, and then we come back on a few slides to a good example of IO adapters we plan to develop. Um, the object store layer allows to implement um, layout plugins to achieve different levels of performance or fault tolerance. For example, we have a red one mirroring layout able to store object as a fixed number of an replica on different types. Uh, using Phobos, one can uh, label each media with any tags of its choice, uh, which implements a very convenient storage partitioning strat strategy. Uh, for example, we can identify and separate LTO7 from LTO8 by a simple tag, uh, or media from one physical location to another one, as different libraries, uh, different buildings, different physical sites. And we can also separate uh, media from different source of funding, for example, um, just by adding some, some tags uh, to each media. Very performant and easy uh, way of doing that. Um, Phobos architecture um, is a distributed one. One of the components deployed by Phobos is a resource scheduler, which uh, optimizes, um, for example, tape, file rate, tape feed rate and minimizes uh, tape amount, for example. That's two um, uh, key um, thing for optimizing performance on using a type library. Uh, the Phobos metadata management is based on a, a distributed k-value schema, which allows to use um, widely scalable distributed NoSQL no, no database, for example. Uh, we can use uh, MongoDB or what, what, uh, what you mean when you want uh, as a, a k-value distributed uh, tool. Um, for recovering and a tape import, uh, metadata uh, are also saved within objects um, on media. Okay, so that's um, a quick look of the global architecture and features of Phobos. Um, I can move to uh, some perspectives of development, um, what we currently plan to add to the product. Um, um, as perspectives, so we plan to develop new connectors um, like S3, Swift, and NFS, uh, in addition of the existing uh, C client API and the existing command line client written uh, in Python. Um, as I said, for instance, we currently collaborate with uh, iCheck and DDN um, to develop an S3 server on top of, uh, of Phobos. In addition of uh, the existing mirroring one, we plan to develop new layout as a striping and uh, erasure coding. Um, the IO adapters layer offers the possibility to add plugins optimizing IO on NVMe, for example, or any other underlying object stores, including uh, Phobos uh, in a recursive schema. Um, we can plug Phobos to Phobos if we have a new IO adapters uh, dedicated to uh, object, for example. Um, media lifecycle management is also a very important topic of work for us. Um, for example, we want to implement automatic migrations between storage technologies, um, allowing, for example, HSM migrations between different tiers. And we continue to optimize resource scheduling, um, especially for prioritizing uh, and grouping uh, IO. We, we plan to offer a distributed and scalable deployment schema for Phobos, um, taking benefits from um, the distributed k-value DB to synchronize and by redirecting client requests to um, to different preferred IO node. Um, each IO node hosting a Phobos daemon, asking resources from the scheduler. Um, and setting up um, a tape storage with Phobos is, is as easy as a couple of commands, um, adding drives, adding and format tapes, um, and that's it, ready, ready to use. Um, to, to end this presentation, I will finish with three use cases, three different use cases. Uh, the first is, um, is an in-production one, and the two next um, ones are upcoming. 
Um, so we use uh, Phobos in production at CA since 2016 to save large uh, genomics data set produced by DNA sequencers um, before transferring them to our HPC data clusters. Um, we also plan to use Phobos, for example, behind an S3 user interface. So Phobos can manage a wide variety of capacity of storage, including tape libraries, and provides an easy and uniform management of all this storage uh, behind um, front end uh, to end users um, using an S3 server. And last use case, um, we plan to use Phobos, for example, as a Luster HSM backend. Uh, we massively use Luster uh, at CA as a user POSIX front end on our HPC cluster nodes. And we plan to use Phobos as a high performance scalable archive backend. Um, Phobos currently offers two different solutions to be connected to a Luster file system. Um, as first solution, we develop a direct and native uh, Luster copy tool. And as second option, uh, you can use existing Luster to S3 copy tools uh, through the Phobos S3 connector, for example. So even if um, it is currently evolving fast, um, Phobos is already open source and its uh, current version is available on GitHub. Um, so we will be very happy if you want to download, test, uh, give us any feedback, and why not uh, contribute to it. Okay, so thanks for your attention, and if you have a question, I will be happy to try to answer it. So well, thank you very much. That's really exciting to see something, uh, the development of type as well. Uh, here we have a couple of questions. A couple of them have been answered already by your colleague, but uh, let's walk through those that haven't. So um, one question was um, maybe regarding the, the data flow from client to server. Do you ensure that data is protected, like using checksums or so on, that, that the integrity is uh, safe? Or is it, you know, when it, once it go, hits the tape, I suppose, like going to LTFS, then it will be um, checksummed? Um, yes, that's, that's part of uh, what we can add um, in our um, uh, layout layers. Uh, it's easy to add um, computation of a checksum when we put uh, a new object store on tape. And has any uh, metadata uh, that we store on tape, we can uh, also store this checksum and check it again when we retrieve the data. So that's part of uh, um, features that we can easily uh, add in uh, upcoming new development. Okay, that's cool. Um, so the next question uh, was for me. So what type of uh, type libraries are you supported? Do you use like the SCSI interface uh, with to the interface with the tape library, or how do I have to understand? Yeah, we we make the choice to use um, the more common um, API. So we, we use uh, the SCSI layer to access um, a library. Um, uh, it's maybe in not uh, the most perfect way in all cases, but um, it allows us to be sure to more or less uh, support all different uh, tape library. So. Currently, um, the, um, uh, the IO layer on tape is based on SCSI uh, driver. Okay. Um, so there's one question re remaining uh, from Massimo. Uh, how, how do you schedule recalls when they require mounting a lot of tape? tape? And how do you handle do you cases handle of small files? Oh, that's part of um, things that we can uh, optimize through the resource uh, scheduler. Um, I guess that um, the, the question, the problem which is under this question is um, how to minimize um, mount and mount of tape, for example, when we uh, write a short uh, small file. Or, for example, how to minimize um, small hole in uh, in tape. Uh, in fact, um, uh, we solve this problem, uh, for example, through two different ways. 
Um, first, um, being sure to use um, from an optimal way our media. Uh, this uh, task is, um, is done by our resource scheduler. Uh, we take care of um, using already mounted uh, media uh, every time it is possible, uh, as often as possible. Um, we try to um, mount and dismount uh, media really only when it is needed. Um, and that's why uh, this resource scheduler component is a very important one. So if I take the example of um, uh, writing small files, um, of course, we definitely not uh, mount and dismount a tape uh, each time we want to write one small file. Uh, we benefit from having an already mounted uh, media uh, and we use it, of course, if we have uh, enough free space to do that. So we really um, use this um, uh, central resource uh, scheduler to optimize the use of, uh, of data. Um, and for uh, being sure of using as best as possible the space on media, um, we, we use the LTFS um, file system for tape. Um, and uh, so um, basically, um, we only uh, use and write uh, data and metadata on this tape uh, when we dismount it. Uh, so it's uh, really crucial to be sure to optimize the number of uh, operation of mounting and dismounting on, on media. I hope this answers the question of how we deal with small files. Oh, that's great. 